Uh, cloud computing is, uh, to a certain extent, uh, people might say it's nothing new. It started off uh, many years ago, perhaps in the 70s, with something we used to call time-sharing systems. What was the idea? You had a large computer, and you had many users that were sharing this computer. And the sharing of the computer was not just sharing the computation, but it was sharing the data, sharing the information, uh, sharing examinations, for instance. And uh, these time-sharing systems were very popular in universities because they allowed you to manage a large number of students uh, through the system by, for instance, offering them the same kind of services and the same kind of structure. For instance, if you were going to mark an exam, you would take the same file about the student and modify the same file rather than write a separate piece of paper for each student or a, rap a separate computer record for each, for each course and for each student. So this idea of putting things together and sharing them in a computing environment is something that goes back to the 1970s. However, it came back very strongly, uh, much more recently, for a couple of reasons. One reason is that, of course, uh, through the internet, we can access a lot of things without knowing what they are and where they are. Okay? So we don't, for instance, when you do a Google search from your mobile phone, you are going through the mobile network, which is wireless. Then you're going to do something called a base station. And then this base station will connect you to some computer where there is this Google database, right? Or Yandex database. Uh, Yandex was done by a friend of mine. So if you uh, go in there, you don't know where it is. You don't even know which computer is supporting it. You have no idea, but you're using it perfectly reliable and you are using exactly cloud computing. Now, this idea of cloud computing that you use from your mobile phone is also ported to a more global level where you're dealing with the uh, data associated with inter enterprises, different, different companies that have the same functions. They have to do payload, uh, sorry, payload, I'm saying pay, paying people, they have to pay people. They have to uh, do uh, human resource functions. They have to do promotions. All these things are standard. And rather than try to do them all by themselves, they will have some large cloud server a cloud service that gives them all of these services and they don't need to know where the computers are, who is managing them, how they run, as long as their data is secure and as long as they get the things done quickly enough. So this is the birth of cloud computing. Now this cloud computing though has a certain number of inconveniences, some bad sides. You know, I said the good sides, there are some bad sides. We've mentioned security. Security is a big, very important thing because you don't want that your data in the same system using similar programs, you don't want that data to move to your competitor, for instance, to another company that is exactly in the same market as you are and which may be uh, wanting your data to find out who your customers are or finding out what kind of uh, business policies you have which make you successful or not. Right? So you don't want the sharing of, of a lot of these things despite the cloud. This is one problem. The second problem with the cloud is energy. As you concentrate a lot of things in these very large machines, you're turning towards uh, infrastructure machines that have megawatts of uh, electricity consumption. Uh, so, uh, who are, but they're using this electricity all the time. Even when they're not very busy, the electricity is being used. So you have huge electricity consumption in these very large centers. Not only are you using electricity to uh, compute and to transfer data inside the system, but you're also using electricity to cool the machines down. So you, if you spend one for making the thing work, you'll maybe spending 0.5 for cooling it down. So you have, again, this high concentration of computation means high concentration of electricity, high concentration of heat, and high concentration of cooling, more electricity. Okay, So you have two big problems that are arising. One is a security issue, the other is the energy consumption issue. One of the biggest energy consumption consumers in, this, in the world is Google, obviously. Uh, Amazon that have large cloud servers. So you have the good uh, and, and you know the nice things about this and then you have the bad things. With respect to this, the research that we have is uh, largely to mitigate, 
to get away from the bad sides. So getting away from the bad sides, today we don't talk about the cloud anymore. We talk about the cloud, the fog, and the edge. So for instance, some computation may be easy to do actually on your mobile phone, which has very low energy consumption. This is the edge. Another part of the computation may go to my computer in my office. There are thousands of them, millions of them. We don't know where they are. This is the fog. And they have very low power consumption because any one of these will put itself to sleep. It's okay if it puts itself to sleep. Why is it not okay if the cloud server puts itself to sleep? Because the requests are coming all the time. It cannot put itself to sleep. It cannot say, stop, I'm sleeping, I wake up in 10 seconds or I wake up in one minute. Not possible. You have to have something which is always ready and always doing the max work. While these can put themselves to sleep, so you can wake them up and so on. So that is the fog. And then you have the cloud itself. So now we have the edge, the fog, and the cloud. And this is a current research topic. If you have some kind of workload, in fact, I'm, as, as we speak, I'm involved in the preparation of a new research project on managing this edge, fog, cloud. How do you dynamically move work in the system so that you optimize, on the one hand, the services it gives, that are quantified as statistical, probabilistic quantities, and how do you also minimize the energy the system consumes as a whole, uh, so that you do not get to the situation where you have these huge energy consumers and, and a continuous growth in energy. I mentioned energy. Energy is the major uh, problem of computation today. Uh, today, uh, if you take the whole energy consumed by uh, information technology, it is equal to the energy consumed, total energy consumed by uh, Germany plus Japan. So two major industrial powers. So there's a huge amount of energy consumption. It's much more than airplanes, the CO2 impact, much more than a lot of areas. And it's an area where it's the amount of energy consumed is constantly increasing. Okay? So that is a huge challenge. So uh, the new solutions the new research uh, solutions will have to address this uh, in, a, in a very, very uh, priority manner. So looking at how you distribute work in this whole system so that you minimize the amount of energy you consume and also offer an accepted level of service. Uh, with reg regard to the accepted level of service, there is something which is, if you wish, commercial, which one calls service level agreements that you say to your cloud server, uh, I'm giving you this work to do, I will pay you as long as uh, the time it takes to do it will be less than something. If the time is above this, then there will be a discount, and then there will be another threshold. If it's above the other threshold, then it's not me who pays you, it's you who pays me. So these service level agreements are very important, and they're also connected to the energy consumed, because energy is what the cloud server or the fog server or the edge server are actually paying for. So they are paying for this energy. It's one of their major, they, they pay more for energy than they pay, they pay for personnel, for staff to run the systems. So uh, the cost functions uh, have an economic form, the mathematical cost functions, they have an economic form which combines the income generated or the loss generated by the cloud system and on the other hand the energy expenditures of the cloud system. And these come in together in, a, uh, in an optimization problem. So we have been working on these questions now for a number of years. And um, uh, there are uh, publications, scientific publications that deal with this, such as the IEEE transactions on cloud computing. Uh, and uh, the uh, research in this area is carried out across the world. Uh, it's uh, also tied to uh, high performance computing, to supercomputing, because the machines that sit behind a cloud server have to be very, very high performance machines because they will be dealing with very large amounts of work that will arrive at the same time. And in addition, there are very interesting networking research problems because these cloud servers are housed in data centers these data centers are composed of large numbers of these high performance machines and they have to interconnect with each other at very high speed in order 
to uh, be able to transfer data. For instance, a job comes here, it needs data that was there, it has to be transferred quickly, and that data has been worked upon prior to this particular step by another machine. So you have special designs of networks. For instance, we've done research with um, a major company called Huawei on the design of networks for data centers. So we see that this notion of a cloud has now evolved into cloud, fog, edge, because of technology, of course, but also because of the costs, energy costs in particular of operating clouds, that there is a, a big optimization problem, uh, which includes uh, the costs of uh, the uh, operating of the system, which is essentially energy, and the costs associated with the income that can generate, can, that the workload can generate in these systems. So these things have to be optimized together. And the energy issue is a major challenge. And the networks that support these systems are also a major challenge because uh, with the very large amounts of data that are going through the cloud and fog, you cannot just rely on slow internet, internet type connections, but you must have gigabytes of data that goes through networks that inter interconnect these data centers.